Uh, no, let's let's see the match. Uh, let's, we've just covered both of these trainers back to back. We've had two very different sets, and, and the way that this one's going, and the way that uh, Wolf's lead takes the field, uh, gives me an indication, uh, along with Juan's <laughs> lead as well, that this is not going to be similar to Juan's no. previous game and be a little more in line with Wolf's previous one. Uh, a little Wolf, bit quicker, yeah. a, a little bit more, uh, maybe one turn of setup, and then just get going. I think, I think you're absolutely right about that. Getting a chance to see the setup come through here. But for Wolf, we're, we're not actually going to see this Urshifu actually stick on the field. It's going to be Incineroar coming out now, getting those Intimidate drops and also maybe hoping to, to catch something on the income and save that Urshifu for a little bit later. But I just feel like, yeah, as, as I kind of expected here, uh, Dynamax. Dynamax, turn number one. And it's from Wolf's side as well. I mean, he doesn't feel the need for the nasty plot in this one. I just thinks that the Galarian Moltres on its own is going to be able to just run through this game. And it, it's definitely a Pokemon that has the potential to do that. Uh, I'll be curious to see if we finally get to look at a Berserk Activate one. No shocks here. We've seen this lead uh, <laughs> at least a couple times. And there's usually one Pokemon that he determines is the Dynamax candidate in that one. Yeah, Kingdra coming back in its best and most powerful form, getting the Dynamax factor and getting a chance to really show why it's such a focal point for Wan's team. Um, but for now, Raichu going for the fake out here. So really like the switch in from Wolf to be able to keep that Urshifu a little bit safer and not break the focus sash that it is holding. Um, but wow, Max Darkness coming through already, which is going to go ahead and drop the special defense of both of these Pokemon. And the special defense boost may be big in getting a knockout the next turn with this Galarian Moltres. Kingdra's max airstream. Yeah, the Incineroar's going to take that quite well. And the Incineroar heading below half, but not a bad turn there. You know, a little bit of damage down from both sides. And, and fake outs just swapped. Uh, very, very kind of... Oh, fake out now available for Wolf on the switch in. And hey, Incineroar's going to look even healthier. This turn looks even better for him at the end after the berry <laughs> activates. Absolutely. And now we're going to get a chance to see maybe, yeah, Raichu not wanting to take this, setting up the rain for Kingdra here with the Politoed switch in. So I really like this from Juan, just continuing that hyper offensive strategy. Uh, he, he has to, and I think he has to uh, try and get through this Moltres as, as quickly as possible. Of course, the rain is a, a combination that can hit uh, and land very, very effectively onto uh, this Incineroar. Uh, that would be really good. And he makes sure that his Kingdra just is always going first, no matter uh, what comes through. So Incineroar's fake out there uh, has to land into the Politoed, really. It's the, the most sensible choice. And yeah, it looks like uh, Juan's going for it with the Max Geyser in the rain. Max Geyser coming through, which is going to finally activate that Berserk on Wolf's Galarian Moltres. That is just another way to boost up that special attack right before Moltres fires back with a Max Airstream, which is going to knock out Wan's Kingdra just like that. Yeah, you can't activate Berserk and then not expect to get knocked out in return. That's not really how that move works. You know, you've just got to be so respectful of it and how it, how it works all the way through. So, uh... Yeah, this Galarian Moltres is now very much in the driving seat, and the main Pokemon that takes advantage of the rain, uh, of course, being that Kingdra, is gone. There's an mm -hmm. airstream coming through, which is really, really good for the Moltres in, in its quest to move before the opponent and, and deal as much damage as it can. Uh, so, yeah, the Moltres probably wants to try and focus down this Raichu a little bit, uh, because that's the thing that could maybe get, get close enough to the knockout. Uh, but the Moltres has been putting in an absolute shift so far, and those airstreams are going to help it out. For, for the rest of the game, I think. Absolutely. I'm, I'm a little scared for, for Wolf's Incineroar with the muddy water in the rain, but uh, maybe Wolf is a little scared of it too. Gonna bring Incineroar back into its Pokeball in favor of the Urshifu, just to be able to try to take that damage a little bit better as Moltres goes for another max airstream. So Urshifu is gonna be able to get that boost too. And Politoed is out of here. Uh, uh, the, uh... <laughs> the Moltres is just running away with this game, setting up these speed boosts. Uh, that's the last turn of its Dynamax, of course. Uh, but getting these knockouts, those special defense drops uh, could have been really important there. Uh, Moltres will be taken out for its troubles, but it's done more than enough yeah. uh, in the, the turns it has been on the field. And, and I think, uh, you know, putting a really good position down for Wolf to, to wrap up this game. The Ashifu's now got a speed boost uh, from the uh, Max Airstream, which is huge. And the Incineroar is coming in to, to kind of tidy this one up and, and slow things down. Um, yeah, Wolf uh, does still have the rain, 
which is really, really nice. And it's now against an Entei. Remember, Wolf has the Rapid Strike version of Urshifu, so it's probably feeling pretty good about what it can do damage-wise. Yeah, I think so as well. I'm kind of looking at, like, Juan trying to do something with this Entei and this Raichu next to each other, but in the rain right now, I just don't feel like this is prime setup for this Entei to really pop off, and that's kind of what Juan needs right now. Plus, Incineroar can just go for the fake out here, breaking the focus sash on the Raichu <laughs> as well as, or, um, excuse me, not carrying the the focus sash. Usually Raichu do carry focus sash, which is why I got confused. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, trading some damage back and forth with priority moves. Urshifu is still allowed to land a Surging Strike. Isn't going to need all three, thanks nope. to the help of the rain, as Entei just gets felled immediately, merely putting down a simple extreme speed before its time is up. Uh, Raichu flinches, isn't given the opportunity to fire back, and uh, yeah, I mean, the Raichu might be given the opportunity to uh, to try and Thunderbolt, but Urshifu, after that max airstream, moves before it. We just saw it in that turn in the order when we got alerted to, to Raichu's flinch, and Urshifu just taking full advantage of the rain here um, to get these huge amounts of damage. Will it be... Oh, I, I was hoping maybe one would do it, but no, it does need the two. <laughs> uh, but that's two knockouts for Surging Strikes that did not need all three hits, just showing how powerful this Urshifu can be, especially when you set the rain up for it towards the end of the game. So Wolf putting himself in the driving seat in this loser's semi-final. Getting a chance to see that Galarian and Moltres also do such a good job of, of being that powerhouse of a Pokemon that we were kind of hoping it would be. Getting a chance to see the Berserk boost happen, as well as just all of the boosts that it was getting from just being able to, I, I don't know, it just did so much work in that game, getting all of those knockouts that I felt like the game was almost over before we really even got going. I mean, the combination of special defense drops from Max Darkness and the special attack boost from Berserk activating meant the Moltres was just unmanageable. Didn't get a knockout turn one, but it did continue to cause problems in, in turns two and in turns three and, and very handily respond to the hyper offense that Juan brought to this game. You know, he committed to the rain combination early doors by activating Swift Swim to make up for any potential max airstreams that would come through from this Galarian Moltres, but it didn't matter in the end uh, as Kingdra was easily felled in response to that. So Juan needs to dig a little bit deeper, maybe even look for something that can, you know, try and slow this game down. But if you're getting hit by Max Darkness, um, yeah, it, it's going to be a tough one for him to come back from, I think. And, and setting up, uh, once again, setting up that opposing Urshifu with the rain when you rely so heavily on Entei to wrap up some games, uh, definitely a problem uh, and a bit of a mismatch in the teams here, I think. We'll see if we can see the adjustments necessary for one to bring us into a game three scenario as we jump into this game number two. And uh, hopefully we get a chance to see that game number three. Otherwise, Wolf's going home with the set and bringing us into our top three players for Players Cup 2. Yeah, it's going to be a really close game and already an adaptation from Wolf in what he's bringing to this one. The Galarian Montres this time partnered up with the Rillaboom, but... Juan thinks he just needs to play this one uh, a little bit differently. Thinks the lead was actually fine and, and just deciding Kingdra Raichu still works for me. Yeah, Kingdra Raichu is definitely a really strong lead for Juan. We've seen it a lot of times coming out of his sets previously in the Players' Cup 2 Global Finals. And it makes a lot of sense to continue to see it here, especially because Raichu does have those ability to have those super effective attacks against that Galarian Moltres. So maybe just another way that you can kind of target it down right away. Well, there it is, once again, the turn one Dynamax, uh, just immediately uh, from Wolf's side. No shock, I think, on, on which one it's going to be. Uh, I doubt the Rillaboom gets the chance to shine in this <laughs> matchup. Um, once again, I think Wolf's just going to try and run away with this game with Galarian Moltres. Yeah, especially with the increased health pool as well, you are able to tank those super effective hits so much better. But Juan also not letting up the pressure here, going for the Gambit, making sure that he has the option to stay in this series and pulling out all the stops here as it is going to be that Kingdra that gets that Dynamax factor once again. Yep, the Kingdra's been a, a big deal for him when it comes to Dynamaxing and, and setting up really early advantages in a number of his games. Uh, Raichu's Volt Switch uh, will allow him to reposition and get a little bit of damage down, which could be huge, uh, but Wolf is going to be given uh, a little bit of time to respond. Uh, no shocks on what's coming in to help out the, <laughs> uh, the, the Kingdra here. It is, of course, the Politoed. 
Yeah, and the Politoed getting the Drizzle set up earlier means that the rain might disappear before that Entei really does have to come into the fray. But Kingdra goes for the Max Geyser with the rain boosted as well as that Swift Swim ability. And going right into the Moltres here is not enough to knock it out though. So Moltres able to hang on with a little bit of health plus getting that Berserk boost before getting a chance to fire off an attack of its own. Max Darkness now coming out from that Moltres and it's going right into the Kingdra with that Berserk boost activated but it just brings that Kingdra to below half. Yeah, it does lower the special defense. Uh, makes it very easy to knock out in the next turn. But we haven't seen anything from the Rillaboom uh, this turn. Uh, it does decide to just knock off the Kingdra. Uh, get rid of the Life Orb. Maybe try and uh, reduce some of the damage output from it. Uh, maybe hoping it would get a little bit more out of that turn. But this Kingdra, yeah, is quite threatening right now. Um, you know, could try and pick off the Moltres. Both of these Pokemon actually on, on Juan's side of the field could pick up. Uh, knockouts on the Moltres if they, they connect with it, but I'm not so sure Wolf's gonna let him do that so easily. No. Uh, Max guarding here and maybe getting another switch in. I, they feel like this is really an interesting position for Juan to be in, just preserving Politoed for later and bringing Entei out now. Maybe expecting that Rillaboom was going to target down that slot, but Kingdra's Max guard comes first on the field as Rillaboom does go for the Grassy Glide, but it's right into the Kingdra. So smart Max Guard coming out from one as it is Max Airstream now going to be firing off into the Entei. It's a one-hit knockout, Adam. You can't hand over the Berserk boost. That that causes so many problems. And uh, you see there, uh, obviously, I, I think Juan is worried about something like the, the Grassy Glide into Politoed, but the Entei just isn't safe to switch in at this time. And, and Airstream boosts are now going over to this Moltres. That's going to be a huge issue, and, and even this Raichu carrying the Assault Vest could become uh, a little bit uh, easier to knock out. Uh, mm -hmm. The Kingdra obviously taking advantage of the grassy terrain that Rillaboom set up, getting a little bit of recovery down there, but uh, yeah, everything is, is being thrown at this Moltres, and he just has to be careful that he doesn't let the Rillaboom completely run away with this game. Yeah, I mean, Rillaboom is still sitting prime and healthy on the field. So, uh, yeah, or, or not, uh, <laughs> just going to save it for later as Incineroar is now the third Pokemon to be revealed from Wolf's side of the field. So going to get that Intimidate drop onto both of these Pokemon, which uh, doesn't really care about it too much. As Raichu goes for the fake out here um, into the Incineroar, just a great switch coming in from Wolf to be able to deny that pressure onto his own Rillaboom. And Max Darkness able to finish off Kingdra and drop it to zero. That's why you have to work in those max airstreams where you can, right? The max airstream boost does mean that, you know, he's able to, to start moving first and, and start getting these knockouts. Uh, the fake out, a little bit of a, a wasted opportunity there. Wolf reading that very, very well. And this Kingdra, uh, not the speediest Kingdra around, even uh, with Swift Swim activated, just moving after this Moltres, uh, a really big problem. And, and Politoed and Raichu, you know, are going to struggle even with... Uh, the Dynamax over for this Moltres uh, are going to struggle to to deal with that. The, the Politoed probably wants to to try and swing this game with, with Muddy Waters. Uh, Muddy Water here could be huge amounts of damage, but this Moltres likely just to, to take one of them out before that even happens. Of course, the Raichu was on the field last turn, and the Special Defense drop from Max Darkness is going to be a huge problem. Politoed not given the chance uh, mm -hmm. to fight back. Ooh, and we get a chance to see Fiery Wrath now coming out from this Galarian Moltres, which does a decent amount of damage to both the Raichu as well as that Politoed on one side of the field. Uh, Wolves Galarian Moltres is going to go down for all of its efforts, but not without a fight. And I feel like this just puts Wolf in, in still like a very commanding position as both the Politoed and the Raichu for one are very, very low now. Oh, they're exceptionally low and the Rillaboom's coming back, right? We've yeah. Got, can't ignore that the Rillaboom's uh, <laughs> available to just deal with this Politoed immediately and, and knowing that the Politoed can't buy time, something that he knows about the choice specs. Uh, he just knows that, yes, he can take any attack from the Raichu and Juan identifying that endgame very, very wisely. Uh, unfortunately, he's not able to fight back and, and take us to a game three, but wow, Wolf's team exploding in two 